Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Coach's Corner program here on the Boilermaker Broadcast Network. I'm your host, Bob McKee. We visit today with Matt Taylor, the head football coach of the Kiwani Boilermakers. Coach, good to see you as always. Hey, thanks for having me again, Bob. Yeah, you bet, Coach. And tough one this last Friday with the Princeton Tigers here in town. And I suppose as much as anything, maybe tip your cap to them. They're, what, number three in the state. Uh, that's a fine club over there. But, Coach, a tough one on the scoreboard for your Boilermakers. Uh, is there much you can take away from the game, or you just burn the tape? No, I think uh, we were uh, competitive for uh, three quarters. Um, again, we, we struggle with uh, defensively. We're, we're spotting teams for two touchdowns, which uh, is going to be tough to do. Um, and then you come back, especially against a, a caliber team of Princeton, you know, uh, I do tip my hat to them. Coach Pearson has done a great job over there. We've got a, a cordial relationship, which is good. He was very complimentary in us in regards to the article uh, that he was involved with, as well as I saw him this week at uh, the Fresh Soft game. And it was very complimentary, and we just talked a little bit about the uh, upcoming uh, schedule. So here's the thing. Three quarters of football, uh, it's kind of like a repeat. Uh, we got to play four quarters of football, and – not spot people, uh, you know, two touchdowns. Uh, but what you take away from it is uh, the compliments of a very high-quality team. Uh, we were very physical. Uh, they left the game uh, pretty pretty beat up in some aspects, um, and we came out of the game relatively healthy, uh, no injuries to report. Um, so we do have some positives. Uh, I'll speak to offensively. Uh, our quarterback, Colson Wellgott, made some nice decisions uh, with the ball. In regards to you know pulling it down, he he gathered a lot of yards on the ground, uh, you know slid at one point in time for uh, common sense safety, uh, stepped out of bounds a couple times, kept some drives going with his feet, and we uh, you know we again had a uh, 150 plus uh, yards passing, which was uh, needed against a quality team. But we do take some positives out of it. Uh, you know we might burn the fourth quarter tape, uh, as you said, but. We competed, and uh, I think we put on a, a good show for the fans. Uh, we were very happy at uh, after uh, shortly after halftime, we went down and put it within one score. And uh, so, with three quarters left in the game, we're within one score. We just have to finish it up, as you said. Coach, you mentioned the uh, fine play of Colson and Wellgod, and if I may say, over the last several seasons, uh, seasons rather, the Boilers really have been uh, blessed with some great quarterback play. Yeah, we've had, uh, you know, clearly we had an All-State quarterback last year. Um, what the quarterback, uh, you know, Colson does for us, he, he knows the game. Um, he is a competitor, and uh, he does some good things with the ball. And, you know, and I, I spoke with him after the game and complimented him on some of the stuff he's doing uh, with the ball and, and, uh, and how he's getting it around the field. And there's always room for improvement. We talk about it and we try to work. We improved last night when we had an offensive practice. So he's doing some good things there. Um, and he's going to continue to become a, a better leader, right? He's going to become even more consistent. And as he picks up on some of the reads and of what teams are doing, he's going to find the open and easy receiver. And that's what we kind of preach to him. You know, uh, the short ones will open up long, you know, and vice versa. But really, uh, we'll, we'll take five yards every play, and that includes in the passing game. Coach, uh, after uh, last Friday's game, it'll drop the uh, season record to one and three. I'm guessing some fans, uh, some prognosticators, some, uh, you know, who know what, are already saying, well, you know, if the Boilers are going to make the postseason, they've got to do this, that, and another thing. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I suspect for the coaching staff and the players, it truly is one game at a time. And this coming Friday, you're headed over to Spring Valley to take on Howell Township. Mm -hmm. Coach, uh, what do you make of that game going in? Well, I think uh, we're both one and three. Uh, they have a new coach who's coming uh, from, uh, I think it's Athens uh, High School uh, down south they had, where they had some success down there. Um, I've watched the tape. You know, we share tape. He's got two of mine. I have two of his. And uh, they look they look crisp. They look sharp. Um, and they look like they're taking a step in the right direction, and that's a compliment to their coach. Um, what I do feel is that we can compete at a high level with them. Um, we're going in there just as any of them win and then as you said in regards to our one and three record uh you know what once the bad taste in your mouth is done and if you look at it uh as i said you know we haven't get wa we haven't got walked off a, a field by anybody that's just completely dominated us uh from start to finish 
uh, we have competed, competed, competed. And at some point in time, at one and three, and the guys know it, it's not a mystery, you got to get the five wins, right, at a bare minimum. And we're looking to get the six wins. And that's always the goal. Um, you know, our goal is to finish six and three, going to the playoffs with a five five victory win streak feel good about what's going on uh similar to some of the other teams have done in the area as well so that that's our goal we're, we're going there to win we're going there to continue to improve we're looking to play four quarters non-stop i'm still waiting right for defensively for us to play 11 man football and that's what i tell the guys it's 11 guys to the ball until the whistle all day and when we start playing that way um, we're going to have better success uh, and we'll be a lot more stingy. Coach, uh, what is the mood of your ball club like right now? Uh, it was a great practice yesterday. Um, you know, they're showing up, they're practicing, they're competing, they're getting their work in. Um, they're taking care of any bumps and bruises with the trainer. You know, Emma Corkles does great for us. Uh, the mood is about as good as you can be, being one in three, um, be because I still tell you, Bob, uh, nobody likes – Nobody likes our record, right? I don't like the record. The players don't like the record. Um, but we've, we're the only ones that can do anything about that. And it starts Friday um, by putting wins on the board. And it starts to the Friday after that and so forth. So it's one game at a time, as you say. But our goal is obviously to get to 6-3 and three and have a, a feel-good feel uh, environment before we head into the playoffs. Coach, uh, the only thing that could make it, it worse, if you will, right now is if you had a bunch of bad attitudes and, you know, some uh, sniping and this sort of thing, you know, back, you know, going behind people's backs, this and that and another thing. Doesn't sound like you have that at all. And, Coach, you got to appreciate the guys hanging tough in there. Like you say, they're not happy with the record. But uh, nobody seems to be spitting on the ground real hard right now. No, in general, you know, uh, young men are learning to mature always, you know, uh, in sports uh and on top of that, losing will uh, test you. Um, so, but we're uh, we're getting by. We're making things happen. Um, the players are, you know, policing themselves quite a bit. Um, and yes, we we don't as a staff, you know, the expectation is we don't point fingers at anybody. Um, the players know. Uh, obviously, there's there's times that you know coaches make mistakes. There's obviously times that players make mistakes. And you know, without uh, degrading them and uh, you know trampling on their self esteem. You know, we try to we try to point out the uh, cr uh, constructive criticism so we can get better. And if uh, communication is such that no one hears what's trying to be said or what information is trying to be passed, nobody's going to improve. So, uh, I'm I'm happy with their uh, their attitudes. We're always looking for continued maturity, period, um, and cohesiveness within a team. And once you can find that, play 11 man football, play four quarters, uh, you'll start stacking on the wins. Coach, uh, what's the injury report look like? Uh, we've still got, you know, Gunnar Salisbury uh, busted his thumb up in uh, Monmouth Roseville. He's in a cast right now, so he didn't play last week. Um, Devontae Jordan, obviously from the first game, has a, uh, you know, a knee issue, which, uh, you know, that's, um, you know, I, I don't see him coming back this season um, per se right now. Uh, beyond that, uh, we've only got two two folks walking walking the sidelines you know out of the four what we started with is uh 45 folks so we're still dressing you know our sophomores juniors and seniors and we got about 43 guys dressed and ready to go um as far as uh everybody's bank by you know by game four and playing princeton and playing monmouth roseville and riverdale you know and ep you know and at one and three uh that there, there are there's some bangs and bruises and stuff but I don't see anybody missing the game that played last that played last week, um, so we're we're sitting pretty good. Coach, uh, a little bit of a lighter note. Something you and I talked about as we were uh, getting ready to come on the air here. The fact that the uh, weather has kind of turned a little bit more. There's uh, uh, it's not necessarily that crispness in the air quite yet, but it's getting there. It's moving more towards that uh, uh, that kind of that feeling you get at this time of the year. And I can tell you. I lived in Southern California for several years, and there's a lot of great sports fans out there, a lot of great football fans. I lived in Houston, Texas for a couple of years, same situation, a lot of good fans there, a lot of good folks, a lot of good uh, football people. But there's just something about the Midwest at this time of the year, whether it's partially the harvest, uh, you just kind of can smell it in the air. It's a certain feeling that comes over you. Coach, uh, for, for people that love football, it's the best time of the year, and you almost can't put it into words. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, when the temps drop, you know, 
football doesn't smell like in the Midwest. Football doesn't smell like a hundred degrees and uh, taking, yeah. <laughs> taking heat precautions. So, yeah, we're definitely glad to get down in the seventies and the sixties overnight. And it, and we've clearly seen weather in the fifties. So. Uh, the guys, uh, it's a perfect environment. They don't have to overdress. They don't underdress. It's a, it's just a, a great thing. And then, you know, whatever the smell is in the air, it could be between a barbecue, a campfire, uh, or leaves, you know, being mulched on the ground and, and grasses being shaved and, like you said, corn being harvested and beans and vice versa or a third cut of alfalfa, whatever it may be. So, yeah, it's a great time of season. Uh, it's a great time of year. Uh, we're, we're in good shape. We're looking good. Uh, we are striving to, to continue to get better, and uh, and that's what we're going to do Friday night, get better. Coach, a pleasure to visit with you as always. Best wishes to you and your Boilermakers Friday night over in Spring Valley. Thanks again, Bob. Anytime. You bet, Coach. Once again, that is Matt Taylor, the head football coach of the Kiwani Boilermakers, and that's going to wrap up this edition of the Coach's Corner program.